All right, somebody send me a clip from um, Fred, Barbershop Conversations. If you don't know who Fred is, Fred at one point in time was an advocate PBC Al Hamas supporter, but turned coattail um, soon as he discovered that Al Heyman wasn't about the program that he thought and basically getting them kicked out of events. And ever since then, Fred has been on this relentless campaign to expose everything about Al Heyman and PBC. So that's just a quick update, just in case you don't know who the guy is. So we're going to watch this video and then um, I'm going to tell y'all what I think. A whole generation of fighters. Jamal Trago hasn't fought a whole generation of fighters. This whole era of fighters, he hasn't fought. Chris Eubanks, Daniel Jacobs, Triple G, he turned down the Canelo fight. I know 100% he turned down the Canelo fight. I wouldn't lie to y'all. I know 100%. And then years later, Jamal Trago came out and told you he ducked Canelo. Demetrius Andrade, Laura, he turned down the Laura fight, y'all. He's turned down the Laura fight at least twice that I know of. At least twice. Trust me on that. Laura used to beat him up as a kid, and he hasn't forgotten it. He doesn't want to touch Laura. I mean, it's like 10 fighters he hasn't fought. Oh, fought Jared Hurd. He hasn't fought Jared Hurd in two weight classes. Jared Hurd is the 160 guy now. It's so, it's like 10 fighters. How do 10 fighters duck you? He lost to Matt Coral Ball that night. Everybody knows it. Everybody saw. He lost that fight 115, 113. 100% he lost that fight i believe and that was the night al Heyman really understood jamal charlo ain't that good jamal charlo your career is over it's simple who are you gonna fight canelo's never fight you you're not gonna fight benavidez you have uh caleb plant's not gonna fight you had you don't add nothing to his career Darrell might fight you he's at the end of his career you know i don't know if he wants a belt some money i don't know what he wants but who you gonna fight and then they gonna start comparing you to your brother and that's gonna eat you alive and guess what jamal charlo gonna do he gonna he just gonna salivate off of that shit oh yeah i'm better than my brother well um he didn't lie about anything. Um, a lot of stuff that Fred says, I'm going, I'm going to believe him because Fred was real hands on with the shit. Fred was at the events, even fighting. Um, <laughs> he even got into it with uh, Sean Porter's daddy. I believe Sean Porter's daddy smacked him or something like that. Sucker smacked him or some shit uh, or or something like that. But either way, Fred is real in tune to this shit and he does his homework. Uh, that's one thing I can say about Fred. He really does do his homework. And shit, he said some shit about Jamel that I didn't even know. I didn't I forgot about the Matt Corbaugh fight. Uh he did lose that fight. And it all makes sense because you look at Jamal Charlo's um resume, you just scratching your head. You can't figure out what the problem is. And and like I will always go back to him trying to sell Brandon Adams. As, as a legacy fight, I will always do that. But everything he said makes sense and everything is true. And I believe everything he said. Because like I said, Fred Fred was on the inside and Fred really does do his homework. He even got a he even got a video where he exposed the um, contracts of PBC fighters. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But what he said about... Um, uh, what he said about them... People going to start comparing Jamal Charlo to his brother and Jamel's just going to soak that up and it's just going to feed his ego. He 100% right about that. He 100% right. But the good thing for Jamal, Jamal has always put his brother above him. So I don't know how much it will affect him, but he's never had a problem putting his uh, brother in front of him. I think he's always known that his brother is really the one between the two of them, but it all makes sense and shit just sad at the end of the day you know uh he right uh how do 10 fighters duck you um i gotta ride with him on that i mean everything he said was 100 percent fact whether you like him or not that's besides the point you know that's besides the point everything he said was on point you know and i agree 110 percent uh jamal uh, his career is over. Like I said, Jamal's a family guy, man. You know, he really not about this boxing shit, you know? And and it's always interesting coming from somebody who supported these guys wholeheartedly. I mean, Fred went hard in the paint for PBC and Al Heyman. I'm talking about real hard. 
So everything he's saying, he knows for a fact. So, yeah, I agree with it. And to add insult to injury, from what I'm hearing, they're trying to set up a fight between Jaime Munguia and Daniel Jacobs. Whether they make the fight or not, he still got further than what Jamal Charlo did. Jamal Charlo didn't even get to a negotiation stage or even mention it that it's a possibility that these two could fight. After talking all that shit about Daniel Jacobs in that hallway, you want to know the funny thing about Charlo and Errol Spence? They both got caught the same way. Backstage, and they got put on blast by whoever they was talking about. The same way Terrence Crawford caught Errol Spence, and the same way uh, Daniel Jacobs caught uh, caught Jamal Charlo. And Jamal Charlo was talking that cash shit. And then as soon as he popped up, his whole energy changed. And that's when they set up and agreed, like, look, you handle your fight, I'm going to handle my fight, and then we can get it on. Daniel Jacobs kept to his word. Right after his fight, he called out Jamal Charlo. The next thing I know, I'm looking at some fight hype video with Jamal drunk at some table and say, hey, man, look, I didn't lie to y'all. Like, the fight's eventually going to happen, you know. Um, just give me some time, Blase Splee. That was, I don't know how many umpteenth years ago and whatever and whatnot. But that just goes to show that you at least could have got your hands on the Daniel Jacobs you know, and one of the best ways that you can get yourself in a position to fight people like Canelo Alvarez, just do the same thing that Manny Pacquiao did to have people talking about him and uh, Floyd Mayweather. You know, besides people just want Floyd Mayweather to lose and try to run him into any brick wall that's available. What Manny Pacquiao did is he went around and he fought all some of the old people that Mayweather fought and he beat him in a more um, fast or con convincing or more exciting fashion. Some would say, and that's how they started talking about Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather. That's the same thing Jamal Charlo could do. Jamal Charlo could go fight Daniel Jacobs, could go fight uh, Triple G. Well, you know what? I don't even I don't even think Triple G was stepping the ring with him. But either way, you know, they you know, they pretty much the same the same cat. Um, or you could go fight the people that he's afraid to fight. And then you could go ahead and you can voice that out to the world. Like, like I'm fighting all the fighters. This dude is scared to fight. Blase splee, get the buzz talking and whatever and whatnot. But the fact that you didn't even get to the negotiation stage after I don't know how long ago that happened. I mean, it basically tells you everything about Jamal Charlo. And the funny thing is, they be hollering lines only. When the truth is, it need to be called, instead of lions only, it needs to be called only one lion, period. And that's his little brother. The kid's in a bad situation as far as the boxing, uh, the eyes of the boxing critics and the boxing world goes. But I'm pretty sure behind the scene, he's taking care of shit. Jamal got a big ass house, you know, like like Al Heyman did take care of him. And maybe that's all he wanted at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, but. Um, at this point, I mean, ain't nothing you could really say. Once again, I'm always going to bring up Brandon Adams. I'm always going to bring that up because when he said that shit, I just couldn't believe it rolled out of his mouth. You know, but Jamal Charlo needs to do something drastic. He don't need to have no more Suleki fights and all that other shit. He don't need no more of this. Jamal is 31, 32. You know what I'm saying? So, you already know, once you hit 30 in boxing years, you're considered old. You know, even though fighters are fighting late late um, in the game. But uh, the kid need to do something. He don't need another fight like this. I didn't think they was going to do this again, but they are. And I don't think Al Heyman believes in him. You know, and part of that has to do with the fact that when they had the time to step up, matter matter of fact, I believe that's the Matt Corbaugh fight where him and Charlo was headlining and they fucking went out there and bombed. Shit, that was their opportunity to show and prove, especially PBC and Al Heyman, that they worth their salt and that, you know, um, they can hold their own and they can sell the pay-per-views or whatever and whatnot. 
And they went out there and they just fucked it all up. They had an opportunity where the light was on them. It was their time. The only thing they had to do was go out there and win. And Jamel Charlo struggled with a win. And Jamal Charlo arguably lost. I don't know, man. Leave thoughts in the comment section. I'm out.